Is this right? Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about all things mood boards. Sometimes they're called inspiration boards, but for the purposes of this video, let's call them mood boards. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about what a mood board is, some tips on how you can get the most out of mood boards, who needs a mood board, why you need a mood board, and I'm also going to be doing a step-by-step -step process of building a mood board that is completely customized just for you guys so you can follow along and see exactly how I do them. So first of all, what is a mood board? A mood board is just an inspiration document that is very visual in nature and it's usually there to provide some lifestyle images or maybe some specific products that you want to put in your space. They can be text, they could be paint colors, they could be swatches, material, whatever you really need in order to be able to communicate what you want out of your space. So it's kind of a collage of sorts of a bunch of different sort of creative things that you want to all put together that really sort of symbolize the space that you want to create. This then sort of becomes the guiding light that you can use uh, to put together a space that feels really cohesive. Okay, so how do you make a mood board? Well, you can do it really a couple of different ways. So the first is the old school way, and that is just magazine clippings or whatever sort of you need, and you literally just create a board and you put you know, clippings from magazines or you take products that you've seen and you sort of just cut them out and you paste them on a board and you sort of use that as the board that you're going to use moving forward. So you can maybe write descriptive words on there, you can pull things out of magazines, you can print things out, whatever. That's sort of the old school way of doing it. You could take fabric swatches and put them on the mood board, whatever you sort of need in order to be able to create something. So whatever you kind of want to use in sort of the offline world is a great way to start to create a mood board. But I really love to create digital mood boards and there's different tools that you can use. There's graphic design software that you can use. My personal favorite is a tool called Milano, which you guys know. I I've talked about on this channel before, but it's my personal favorite way to create mood boards and they are actually the sponsor of this video. So I'm going to be using Milanote throughout this video and just kind of showing you some of the features that I really like to use with Milanote, but all to serve the purpose of creating a beautiful, wonderful mood board that you can then use and create for yourself in your own space. So let's go through and start to create a mood board uh, right here. I'm going to look down at my laptop here because this is where I'm going to be creating a mood board. And if you really want a good idea of what a mood board is, just click on one of the templates that they have and you can see they've got this beautiful mood board that looks awesome actually. Um, and you can sort of use this as a good place to start. So this is kind of a good starting point. You can even keep the content there and that way, you know, you can just sort of use that as a jumping off point, kind of a bit of the training wheels to show you how to create a mood board. But I'm gonna show you how to create one from scratch. So let's close this out and let's go and create a space. So let's call this one, let's say you wanna create uh, a patio space and let's say you want it to have a feel of like a sort of a boho space. So let's call this boho patio, boho patio. And let's look at what you're going to create for your boho patio. So you might uh, create different images. You can upload different images that maybe you have on your computer that you want to save. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to actually just sort of like pin things with Milanote from the internet, which I think is really helpful. But basically, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, let's get to it. So again, if you want to use sort of graphic design software, you would save these images and then upload them to your graphic design software. That totally works too. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to make it really simple and just click on the save button here. It's a Chrome extension that you actually just put on your computer and then uh, you can save any images off the internet and then upload them and they go directly into Milanote. So to do that here in Milanote, it's super easy. If you actually just hover over this image, what is really great is you just click on this save button and you can just say save to Boho Patio. That's that new board that I created. You just click save and then you go over to your Milanote and you can just drag and drop from this unsorted area. You can resize the picture, you can do whatever you want. And really all you're doing is you're just pulling all these different images and text and swatches and whatever, and you're just pulling them together to sort of create a space that really feels cohesive and looks beautiful and sort of represents what you're trying to go for. So I'm gonna work on this and just get a whole bunch of images, some lifestyle images, a whole bunch of different stuff, and I'm gonna sort of create something that looks a little bit more of a mood board.
So one of the things I really like about Milanote as well, which I think is really helpful and kind of makes it a little bit different than other tools that I've used for mood boards, is that everything that you're saving with the pin extension or anything that you're really saving that's coming from a link means that you can always refer back to it, which I think is really cool. So you can see here, when I click on this image, it's actually gonna take me directly to the thing that I pinned, which to me is really, really helpful because oftentimes I'm saving all these different images and creating something that looks really beautiful, but I'm also wanting to create something that is gonna flow into a little bit more of a project management tool, something that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to remember where I got all this stuff. So it's one thing to be able to save beautiful images. It's another thing to go, okay, great, those are really nice images, but how am I actually going to buy these products? How am I actually going to get these pieces and bring them into my home. So although I really like to have my mood board with the links because I think that's really helpful to be able to refer back to. So if you are looking for a really sort of pretty mood board and you want to remove some of these links, it's super easy. You just basically just have to click on the caption of each of the cards and uh, it removes the caption there so you don't see that. So it just looks like the beautiful image that you maybe are looking for. Uh, so that's really great if you want to export this as a PDF, you want to show this to clients, or if you are using this for your own purposes and you just want to sit back and admire your gorgeous mood board like I've done here with this beautiful boho patio that you're ready to have a glass of wine on. Another thing that I find to be really helpful um, is to use what's called like a color picker. I'm gonna link to one in the description down below. It's just kind of a generic one. I think there's a whole bunch that are out there. So it's another Chrome extension as well. But what you can do is you can be able to select any color that's on the screen. So if you say like a particular image and you wanna really find out what the hex code is. So you can use what's called like the hex code, uh, which is just like the color code that it uses. And you can actually track that color code and be able to to use that in your mood boards. So it's really easy, I'll show you how to do it. So I use just this one here and I just click here and if I go pick color from page, so let's say I really love this, um, say art that I love here from Etsy, um, I can actually just like go over any one of these colors. I don't know if you can see that it's changing. Um, and I can take, so let's say I wanna grab this sort of peachy, uh, warm, bit warm brown tone. So I can just copy that to clipboard. What I can do is then I can go into Milanote and I can just take a note and I can just drag it. And when I drag it, I can just pop, I can just basically paste that hex code. And when I press enter, it actually just creates the color swatch already for me. So that can be really helpful when you're doing a mood board because um, colors are usually a really big part of it. So this is a way to sort of take things that you really like off the internet and you're able to sort of translate that into what's the hex code. And then you're able to put that Milanote and add that in to kind of create that color palette that you're looking for. So super helpful for to do that with your mood boards. Something else you might find helpful is being able to remove the background in some of your images. So sometimes they maybe have a white background and you don't want to cover things up on your mood board and you want things to just sort of stand out. Uh, one of the favorite ones that I love is a totally free tool and it's called um, remove.bg. It sounds like a weird website, but trust me, it works. And basically you can even copy a URL from say um, an image that you really like. You just kind of right click on an image and then you take that URL and you're able to pop that into remove.bg and it'll completely remove the background for you, which is amazing because that means then you can pop it into your mood board and you don't have to really worry about it covering up other images. So super helpful tip there. Another thing that's really helpful is also adding different comments that you might find. So again, if this is collaborative and you're working with a designer or a contractor, you and your partner are maybe trying to communicate with each other on this mood board, um, a really great thing to do is to sort of add different comments. And sometimes you can also just use it to record what you like and don't like about certain images. So maybe with these planters, for example, you might really like the plants, like the snake plants, you might really like the different plants that are there, but you might not like the pots. So if you add this different comment, you can just sort of comment to yourself and say, really like the plants, don't really like the pots. And you can sort of kind of remember what you like and don't like about different aspects of your mood board which I personally think is more helpful. Some people don't wanna clutter their mood board with comments. They just want it to look really pretty and beautiful at the end. That works too, I understand that, and it's just sort of a really visual component. For me, I personally, again, I use this a little bit more as a mood board, but also kind of a little bit more into a project management tool. So personally, I think it's a lot more helpful to remember what you like and don't like about specific images. So comments are a really great way to do that. So that's it for me for today, you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Special thanks again to Milanote. Uh, check out in the description uh, a link for you to check it out. It's free to get started and start creating those beautiful mood boards. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks, bye.